I think there's more to come from him than 200. He went 144.4, I believe it was, at uh, Olympics to come fourth. That mm. is super impressive. Um, I believe he can go 143 in Paris. I reckon he could do it, which is then, that's a gold. If he does I... that, that's gold. Welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, where we aim to give swimming the coverage and publicity it deserves. Every week, we celebrate the sport we love with amazing special guests and topics from around the swimming pool. And now, here are your hosts, Scott and Dan. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. No guest for you this week, but that doesn't mean that this week's episode isn't going to add some amazing value to your swimming knowledge. Me and Dan have decided to break down the future superstars of the sport. That's quite a few as well, actually. We did a bit of research beforehand and going Lots off knowledge of that we've off we've had off like the Olympics, for example, and there are so many to try and pin down and choose from. But we've done our very best to do like a top three, which is really tough. But we've uh, we've got a lot of honorable mentions as well. There's quite yes. a few. Yes, it's certainly an exciting time for swimming. So what we're going to do, this is going to be a two-part podcast. Mm. So the first part is going to be the guy side. And then the second part, which is going to be super difficult, it is. is the women's side. Because there are so many names coming out on the women's side, which you're probably all aware of them already as well, which mm. is the scary thing. Um, Dan, before we get into it, Let's talk about what sparked this podcast idea off. And it was yeah. the Swim Swam Top 100. <laughs> now, it's a very controversial list looking at very. it. I've, I'm sure they've put up some some rankings to cause a bit of debate, a bit of clicks. Um, but we weren't too happy with a few of the Brits' positions on there. No, I think I agree with some of them, but the majority... Uh, we disagree with, especially the last one, which we will mention in a minute. But um, I think we had to say Dressel was going to be number one. I think everyone would agree that Adam was number two. But then from there on, it's very <laughs> questionable. Very so questionable. we agree with two out of 100. Um, <laughs> but instead of putting our own top 100 out there, which in fairness, credit to Swim Swam, takes a lot of effort to write mm. up about each 100 swimmers. This is why we thought we'd give the future stars. Who's going to come through? Who are the names that you guys really need to pay attention to? Yeah. Um, but Dan, before we get into it, before we get into... We're going to start off with our three British swimmers who we really, really think you should be following over the next few years. Yeah. We'll talk about the one British swimmer who's a massive snub on that Swim Swam Top 100 guys list and that's jimmy guy who's at 92 yeah. 92 92 and he's a double olympic gold medalist <laughs> what on earth um the names that were above him or below him or above yeah above him um were you know, they're not they would some of them didn't even go to the olympics no. let alone win medals which was baffling um yeah 92nd for jimmy Dis in the world disrespectful disrespectful it is, it is isn't it yeah um we might be British, we might be biased, but that is a bit of a kick in the teeth. And I think he deserves a lot more respect. And as we constantly say, he's the best relay swimmer to have ever got in the swimming pool in our eyes. Well, and, that, and he, he dropped his individual 100 fly and based off times or going off times that was swam, he could have got a bronze medal in that individually in mm. the 100 fly. So you never know if he did get that bronze in the, in the uh, 100 fly, would he have gone up those rankings? Who knows? We'll never find out. But uh, yes, disrespectful for 92nd for Jimmy Guy. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to say about it. Just disrespectfully, it should be higher. It should Just be higher. Kind of loses all credibility for me if you're putting a double Olympic champ that low. Um, yeah. Right then, future stars of swimming. And like I said, two part podcast. This part is going to be on the guy's side tune in next week for the girl side so make sure you're subscribed to the propulsion swimming podcast for that one dan let's kick things off with the brits we are a british podcast after all so we definitely need to highlight the future stars of british swimming that are coming through the water mm. and all three of them have been on this podcast <laughs> They have, actually. They really have. Uh, let's go with the first one. Let's start with Ed Mildred. Yes. He didn't quite make it to the Olympics, but I think 
when Paris comes round, I think he's a real threat to get on that British team. Um, fantastic freestyler, fantastic butterfly swimmer. Recently, just moved to Bath from Northampton, um, and he's yeah with Dave McNulty, and he seems very open that to just not sticking to the flies and the freestyle sprint events, but he's happy to go to the the two hundred free, maybe even the four hundred IM. So I think there's a lot of promise from him, and especially that he's moved to a, ma- a major national centre as well in Bath with some amazing training partners. I think his future looks bright, really definitely, bright. Definitely, definitely. He um he stood out for me on the London Raw team just by the fact that he was swimming whatever they asked him to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think we've, we've spoken to multiple swimmers actually at Northampton Swimming Club. It's kind of the philosophy that they have there. Don't yep. narrow down your options. And by the time you're 18, you've still got multiple options ahead of him. He could be the next 100 butterfly swimmer. He could add some mm. depth to that four by one medley relay. Give Jimmy Guy a rest in the heats. Yep. He could yep. come into that four by one freestyle relay we just there's multiple options for him ahead of Paris and I, I think yeah. he is going to almost be a key cog in the British swimming that that relay dominance that we've had yeah. recently yeah there's a reason why London Raw wanted him on the team because mm. of his versatility of doing two strokes really well but you could stick him on the IM as well um yeah I'm really looking forward to it and he could be a key cog in the relay team like you were saying the medley team mm. he might even go into four by two as well um, but yes, really there's a lot of depth in the four by two. <laughs> oh, there is. Yeah. And he, I mean, at the moment he's classed as like a, a, a backup if you like, but I think he might just be right up there given, give him another two, three, maybe four years time. And mm. Hey, uh, I think he might be there on the first team sheet. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, next British swimmer to look out for then Jacob Whittle. Now, we spoke to him on this podcast when he was just the age of 16 before he was about to go off to his first Olympic Games as, I believe, the youngest member of Team GB in the pool. He doesn't speak like a now 17-year-old. He didn't speak then as a 16-year-old. He, like, old man head on (laughs) young man's shoulders. It was incredible to um, touch upon his mindset. I think that's the thing that stands out to me the most. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And it's very similar to Ed, where he's open to maybe not versatility in terms of strokes, but he's happy to go up in distance on the freestyle events. He doesn't just want to be a 50 meter, 100 meter freestyler, but he wants to do the 200 and maybe even a 400 as well, which I think he should. I think he should give that a little go. Really? I, yeah, <laughs> not don't disregard it completely. Put it into your training so it's good for your 200 later on. You do not want to be out of the 4 by 200 British team right now. At all. Okay. What I would say is I don't, I don't think he's racing a 400 meters freestyle, kind of based on the squad that he's in now. So he's in the Mel Marshall squad at Loughborough, and the only one going above 100 is Greenbank, isn't it? Is, is Luke on the backstroke, of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So he's in a more sprint based program, moved from DaVencio now over to Mel Marshall squad at Loughborough. And mm. Yeah, he's he's just a sponge. We spoke to him. We see his Instagram stories. He's a sponge off Adam and Luke. And who are, who are the better training partners than those two? Very similar to Ed. He's recently just moved to a national center with, a, again, amazing training, training partners. And the mentors that he's got in Mel, in Luke, in Adam, you just think, blimey. He's, he's, if he, Anna. Anna as well. Yes, there's loads. Sarah Vasio is in that squad too. That They're all very sprint-based, so I see what you're saying. Um, he's just got to learn. He's just got to mm. follow what they do. Just do what Adam does in the gym. Does what do what Luke does when it comes to the distance in the pool. Um, I think he looks really well, really good at the moment. And um, he only just missed out on the final in Tokyo in the hundred meters freestyle. Yeah, only just. You just think, wow, at the age of sixteen, just missing Olympic final. That is um, that's good going. Really, good almost going. went under the radar. In the amount of yeah. success that British Swimming had, he his performances went under the radar. He was part of that four by one freestyle relay, which it's unfortunate. unfortunately just missed the final. But I mean, like Ed, he's he's going to be a key part of that relay for the foreseeable mm. future. And I really see that team threatening in Paris. That four by one. Well, especially with the guy that we're about to talk about as well, he is a he's a re- another one to add to the relay machine of Team GB at the moment, and that is uh, that's Matt Richards, who is nineteen. Um, he is an Olympic champion already in the oh, four yeah. by two hundred, and I think he's going to be another Olympic champion again in that same relay. But he threatens not just in the relay, but in the individuals too, both in the one hundred and the two hundred. 
it's another bright future for, for him, another swarm of ours. Well, this is the thing. They're all almost 100 freestylers, which has yeah. been a fairly weak event for British swimming in recent years. You've usually yeah. had to have Ben Proud coming up to swim yeah. 100 in a relay, or you've got Duncan Scott sw- swimming down. Does Duncan Scott swim down? I don't think so. I, I think <laughs> actually, <heavy> than <laughs> if he decided to go for the hundred, he'd be the best hundred freestyler Britain's ever seen. Um, but that's just whatever event he decides. But anyway, Matt. I mean, he's got yes. British records, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so he is, I suppose. He is good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like Jimmy Guy, like we were speaking about, Matt pulled out of his own individual in the hundred yes. freestyle in Tokyo. And who knows, he could have gone sub 48. He was looking in really, really good form. I, I actually think he would have gone sub 48. Ultimately, we will never find out. I mean, hindsight would have been a beautiful thing if he was to go 47.8.9, because that would have been mm. a fantastic swim. That would have been a final. No doubt that would have been a final. Um, we'll never know, but you would sacrifice going 47 points for Olympic gold, wouldn't you? Yes. yes. Every day of the week. So, um, yes, yeah, so he's got a fantastic setup there in Bath. Um, great swimmers to look up to in terms of Jimmy Guy, Tom Dean, both Olympic medalists as well as him. Um, and then, of course, you've got Ed, Drill, Ed Mildred to join into the, the party as well. So, yes, yeah. flying. Absolutely flying. Absolutely flying. Yeah. I think there's one key element to Matt Richards, which I really, really like, which no one's going to talk about. Many people might not think much about it at all. ISL this year, instead of staying on the New York Breakers, he decided to leave decided to get out of his comfort zone and ultimately he get, got picked up by Team Iron. Yeah. And that was a team full of world, world-class sprinters. So he was learning from the likes of Orsi, Tom DeBoer. Mm. Um, Tromo Yoyo, I suppose. Exactly, on the even Tromo Yoyo. So he, he was, I don't know, it's almost like he took it upon himself to get out of his comfort zone, learn from these international swimmers from around the world and further his knowledge, which yep. is... It was almost an atmosphere that actually no other British swimmer got to experience or environment that they got to experience. And I actually think that could be really key for him going forward. I think it's smart. I do. I really think it's smart. Very much similar to Jacob Whittle, where I hope he is literally taken everything on board of what they do in the, let's say, pre-pool. Let's go to land training, in the pool, recovery. I hope he learns and asks questions to these guys who are the most experienced. Like Kwame Yogi, for example, is a legend of the sport. Mm. Ask her questions, you know, up, update your knowledge, you know, learn as much as you can from these guys. And I really hope he's done that because if he has, well, it's going to be a huge threat on the medal podium come Olympics, Worlds, whatever. Yeah. And we saw how the breakers did. It was the right decision. I think <laughs> in hindsight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that is the three Brits to pay attention to. We've got three superstars in the international team as well. But first, some honorable mentions mm. that... I mean, there's there's world junior record holders all over the place here oh, yeah. that yep. we should probably cue your eye into slightly. Yes. So we've got Hubert Koss, Hungarian IM swimmer. He's got the 200 meter individual world junior record. Um, Phelps did go faster at his age, but his time is unratified. Mm. Don't ask me why. Mm. Um, <laughs> Andre Minikov, Russian. I'm sure many people already know of Minikov. 100 meters butterfly swimmer, 100 meters freestyle swimmer, already a key member of the Russian relay team. He's, well, he's very much like a younger Jimmy guy at this point for them. A little bit like that, actually. Yeah, definitely watch out for him. Just, yeah, like, like you say, a key member to the Russian relay team. But individually, I think there's a bit of a, a bit of a threat to the to the senior guys, if you like. So, yeah, mm, watch out for definitely. him. Um, Ilya Borodin, I am mm. swimmer. Now, Dan tipped him for Olympic success in the 400 I am. Yeah. You thought yeah. a medal was on the way, potentially gold. But unfortunately, we never saw what happened because he was the only swimmer to test positive for COVID and couldn't get off the plane in Japan. Um, I, was, I would I was have really loved to see what he had done. Yeah, and me. <laughs> and me. <laughs> he actually did really well in ISL. And I'm like, oh, what? If only he like... Because my, my prediction was then void as soon as he wasn't allowed on yeah. the plane or whatever. I was like, oh. And especially the fact that the 400 IM at the Olympics was, was so wide tightly open. contested. I mean, at, at that point, I thought he was that was a bit of like a... Um, like an underdog sort of status, but actually mm. they were all pretty much the same. They all finished in like a four or eight, nine sort of time. Yeah. It could have gone to Max, could have gone to Claire, but it could have gone to, well, eventually it went to Chase Callis. And you just think, oh, 
I think I could have gone to Borodin. Yep. Um, and I do think he is the one to look out for in the future for definitely the 400 IM and maybe even the 200, but that might be too short for him. Yeah, he's got multiple world junior records in short course and long course across yeah. the IMs. So, yeah, you know he's good. He's yes. very good. Um, yeah. Thomas Neal, the next Australian freestyle to be churned out over there. He's got the 400 meters freestyle short course world junior record. Been around a block for a little while now, but, I mean, you make the Aussie team on freestyle, you're good. You're good. Yeah, they, they like you say, they do churn them out, don't they? And I'll show you the freestyle techniques are not they're not perfect because no one's stroke is ever perfect. But I thought, um, thought was close. <laughs> it's it's pretty close, isn't it? To Australia, <laughs> to Australian standards, if you like. So yes, definitely watch out for him. They've got all they've got amazing freestylers that right now in Winnington and McLaughlin. So just got to make the team first. Yeah, <laughs> add his name to a list of many swimmers. So yeah, watch out for him. And then the final honourable mention is Eddie Wang. So mm. he will be definitely a name for anyone who's watched ISL. 200 meters butterfly sensation for the Cali Condors. Yep. Again, another superstar in the making, potentially in the pool. Yeah, I, I think he might. I, when I watched him the first time, the f- second season of ISL, I generally thought we're seeing the next Phelps-ish kind of summer in, on, on the fly <laughs> side. Not the IM side, on the fly side. Yeah. Um, but now obviously... Phelps, it's not Phelps anymore, it's Milak, isn't it? And you think, oh, yep. it's a different level again. So, yes. Um, he's he's almost, he's proven at short course, I'd like to see him go up to long course. Yes, yes, true. I think that is yeah. the only thing, which is also a good segue into our first superstar of the future. Now, this swimmer broke multiple world junior records at the FINA World Cup short course season. He beat Kyle Chalmers multiple yeah. times. He's definitely, definitely our first superstar, Matthew Sates. Dan, what do you like about Sates? Many things, to be honest with you. Uh, 18-year-old South African. He's recently just moved to Georgia, I believe, for the NCAAs. NCAAs, yeah. Yeah, so that's going to bode well. They do it right over there in America, don't they? Um, like you say, broken numerous world junior records and it's not just the im events he's very strong at freestyle like you say he's beaten charmers and what i like about it is that he's not scared of a challenge i mean you're not supposed to be beating charmers well we kind of kind of saw it didn't we in the in the world short course where he brought the world record for the 100 charmers um but matthew sates was uh, was beating him quite mm. quite comfortably actually in the races and charmers was in good form yeah he was yeah he was <laughs> yeah um, my only sort of inkling that might struggle with him is that he's very good short course, but untested at long course. Yeah. If I need to see him swim long course to be able to say, yes, this is the guy we must watch. Um, when it comes to short course, yes, watch him. He is, he is definitely one to watch, but he needs to see what he can do when it comes to long course. Yeah. See, that would be my point as well. Um, kind of under the radar. He was actually at Tokyo. And he yeah. did nothing. He did nothing really. Yeah. I think he made semi-finals in 200 IM, but was completely under the radar. wasn't a name until the FINA World Cups, where he just blew the doors off. Yeah. Um, I would say we are highly unlikely to see in the next few years quite what he can do long course with the fact that he's now gone to NCAA's. I think yeah. he will tear up the trees short course because mm-hmm. that's what NCAA's are. Yep, and. Uh, is it a bit of an ask to say he is a superstar long course? He's not right now, is he? Just because he hasn't proven it. That, yeah. That's it, really. Once he, it's a shame because um, I don't know how many long course events are happening this year, so we just don't know f- what he can do. So He might be at commies. South Africa are at commies, so I'd like to yeah. see what he does there. Well, I'm assuming he would qualify for commies in actual, actually numerous events, to be honest with you. So we'll see what he does then. That's where our sort of predictions will come to fruition. We'll find out. So our second superstar of the future. And everyone, mm. everyone knows this name. There was a little bit of uproar that he didn't win our breakout swimmer. Um, <laughs> David Popper Vici. Um, the kid had an unreal... 2021 yeah. blew the doors off set times that a 17 year old should yeah shouldn't be getting anywhere near yeah dan break down popovici for us 
Oh, there's so many things to talk about. Um, let's start off with the technique. The technique is very good. Really, really good. Very long arms for a great distance per stroke and great efficiency in the water. It's got that sort of gallop, hasn't it? So very high mm. in the water because of it, um, which is why strong. I think very strong. And actually, very similar to Duncan Scott, he was starts off quite slight. And mm. I think there's definitely a frame to build into. Um, he went 47.3 at the European juniors, didn't he? Which is insane for a 16 year old. Let's, let's put that out. Like that is completely insane. Um, but I think he's better suited to the 200. I think there's more to come from him than 200. He went 144.4, I believe it was at uh, Olympics to come fourth. That mm. is super impressive. Um, I believe he can go 143 in Paris. I reckon he could do it, which is then that's a gold. If he does I... that, that's gold potentially, but we're all guessing. This is a thing. <laughs> We're looking at his times that he's doing now, but will he will he do that in three years' time? Everyone can see the potential, but I don't know. I, I love know. that. I actually love that prediction because my biggest knock on him was the fact that his fastest time, which everyone went bonkers for, that 47.3, was in mm. complete clear water. It was basically yes. a time trial. And when yeah. it came to the Olympics, I th- some people put him on the podium. I know other people mm. in the swimming media world who predicted him on the podium. No. The, yeah, well, I, the, we didn't the, have him on the podium. The waves were going to be way too much. The wash, you need to be built like Chalmers, like Dressel. Yeah. Dare I say it, like Manadu, to cope with <laughs> these. These 100 freestyle waves are huge, especially for a 17-year-old kid. That That's a lot to deal with. Like you said, he's got quite a slight fl- frame right now. And yeah. maybe, the, you're right, the 200, he might be more suited for two. Yeah, Actually, I, lo- so. I love that comparison to Duncan Scott. I love it. Yeah, I, I think they're very similar in that sort of way because Duncan was relatively skinny for a long time and it's only recently, maybe the last two, maybe three years, you can see Duncan's actually started to fill out. Um, I think that will happen to Popovici. That 100 free time, I think it will come down a little bit, but I don't know how by how much, to be honest with you, because he's now going to be in the field with these massive guys, you know? Um so I think he's more suited to a 200, definitely. I just don't know if there's going to be a lot of media pressure around him. because of, There's a lot already. Yeah, because of how good he was so young. Will he be able to deal with it? Don't know just yet. Again, we're going to find out. This is why we're predicting the future summers. But as of right now, he's got a bright future, a very mm. bright future. He's already signed on to be like the face of Arena. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah no pressure. No pressure yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, Final swimmer then, and one who is going to go under the radar in terms of media pressure because of mm. basically where he's from. Hwang Sung Woo. Um, South Korea. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, you've, you've got him ahead of Popovici here, which some people might say is a bit punchy. I completely agree. Completely no, agree. I, I, yeah, I have him ahead only because he has proven himself against the very best. He's beaten some of the, be- the best summers. Charm he's taken it them. to them. Yeah, absolutely. And I actually, as much as it didn't work for him ultimately, but I actually kind of like the way that he attacks the 200 free at Tokyo. Mm. Yes, he went out a bit too fast and maybe a Just bit too much I learned too much it. adrenaline. But um, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, you've got to learn from your failures. Um, and I love the fact that he, he just went for it, playing with his limit. What can we do? How fast can we go out and see how fast we can come back? Um, <laughs> granted, 49 point for a 100 meter split on a 200 is ridiculously fast and yes he was always going <laughs> to fade away and brilliant for us as brits because hey, we got look, the one two but i, I like the fact a, i like the fact he went an olympic it. final that yeah, is you what just you go do. for it i maybe in his head he was like you know what i there's no way i can bring it back against duncan scott probably his eyes were on duncan scott yeah so let's take it to him there's yeah. absolutely gun it and you have always said and ian thorpe has always said the way to yeah. race a 200 free is just go yeah, just you've got to go at least. Go. You've got to go fifty point at the start of uh, a two hundred free. Mm. Otherwise, you're not really in that world class time category, if you like. Um, I actually think he's going to get all the backing in the world from from Korea. To be honest with you, he's but not going to have problem... the pressure of the uh, the no. world's media either. But in terms of funding and all the rest of it, in terms of facilities, mm. it's all going to be given to him effectively. Um, we don't know but... enough about. Well, that's the yeah, we don't, but I'm <laughs> assuming I'm guessing. Um, but does that then add expectation on his shoulders to to perform? Mm. It's the other side of the things, don't know, don't know, similar to the Popovici situation, really. 
Yeah, people people handle the pressure but, very differently, I guess. I mean, the this is our list of future superstars. There's a, if we're naming them now, there's already media attention on them. Yes, yeah, that's very true. Yeah. <laughs> so there's our top three. Do you guys agree with us? Yes. Leave your comments in the comment section on YouTube. Let us know what you think of, well, not just our top three, but also the Brits. If there's any other Brits out there that we may have missed, I'd be really ashamed of us if we did. (laughs) I really hope we got them all. (laughs) Yeah. Um, If you think anyone's going to break through, who are your names to look out for? Dan, before we finish this part one of this podcast, Mm. I'm going to ask you a big question. Okay. Out of the three Brits and the three international superstars of the future, who is winning the most medals? Out of all of them? Yeah. Out of all of them. I'm going to go for... Oh, it's difficult. I've got a top two. I'm going for either Popovici or Matt Richards. Now, Matt Richards is in there because he adds that relay dimension. That, That was my one. Yeah, I I had Matt Richards based on the relay and the strength of British relay swimming right now. The the yeah. fact that you look at the number of medals that like Jimmy Guy's won, and you you then think Matt Richards is also very good at the two hundred meters freestyle. We forget that he was almost on that team instead of well Tom Dean. <laughs> yeah, nearly. I suppose yeah. <laughs> nearly. Yeah, he came third at trials. He's gonna be there and thereabouts in the future. Um. Okay, without Matt Richards, then you reckon Popovici is going to win the next? Uh, individually, I think yes. Um, just okay. because, well, my wild prediction of him going one forty-three, I just don't know if anyone goes quicker. That maybe Duncan and Tom join him in that bracket in Paris. It's going to be a very quick two hundred three. Let's put it out there right now. Mm. Um, the times that I swam at Tokyo will probably just about scrape a medal. I would have thought. Um, so yes, I would say Popovici. And he might be all right on the 100. I'm not quite sure. But you've got the likes of Dressel and Chalmers still going. So I think the one and two medals are just gone at the moment. So, yeah. But yes, yeah, I think it's those. And Huang as well. But again, doesn't really have that relay to to combat with the Mm. the medal counts, if you you like. Yeah, see, my argument maybe with Matt Sates and the versatility, but we just don't quite know what he's going to do long course yet. I think that's that's the exciting element about him as well. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So that just about rounds up the part one of the future superstars of swimming. Dan, we will be back in seven days' time for part two and to go through the women's side. And Mm. yeah, I think we might struggle to pick out just three on that one. <laughs> well, there's a reason why we did the men first. It's a little bit easier. The women, they're all, oh, man. It's, we're going to get something wrong. We're going to have a few comments saying, you've missed this person, you've missed this person. Like, Listen, there's going to be, there's so many. Sorry if, if we miss one and sorry if we get your top three wrong. But um, <laughs> listen, we're going to do our very best. It's going to be a tough one. Going to look forward to it though. So if you haven't subscribed already, now is the time to do it so you don't miss next week's episode. Dan, I will see you in seven days time. Thank you for listening, everyone, and we'll catch you on the next one. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.